So Tesla's in the news again today. This time it's down 5% because just only a day after being included in the S&P 500, we're seeing the drop. Now, I promised you a part two to a video I did last week on Tesla showing you how to create a high probability trade, but this time I want to show you how to do it with much less cost, much less risk, but the same probabilities. So, let's get to work. Hey everyone, Tom Gentile. Welcome to Tom's Trading Room. You know what we do here. We show you how to spot opportunity and create alternative strategies other than simply buying and holding stock. Do me a favor right now, hit that like button, smash that thing, because it does help support our channel. Also, if you subscribe to these videos, you'll get them as soon as they're uploaded. Okay, so let's take a look at Tesla once again. Uh, the, the volatility is off the charts as we head into the holiday week. Let's see if there's a trade that we could take that gives us high probability, also non-directional, which means it works whether the stock goes up or down, and at the same time, we could do so with minimal cost and minimal risk. Okay, so if you remember last week, my strategy for Tesla, I said Tesla was moving around a lot, emotions were running high, and so was volatility. It's very technically hard to figure out this stock. Um, the, the recent news put it into the S&P 500, but the news today was that the stock dropped 5% on the open. Now, last week, we talked about the best strategy being a strangle, putting yourself in a position where you create a high probability trade. Uh, and again, remember what a strangle was? It was an out-of-the-money call and out-of-the-money put using the same expiration date. And you sell these, and they put premium into your account. Now, the cost and risk on a strangle is high. And th that was one of the biggest things that uh, biggest comments that come out was, well, this is this is high for the average trader. And is there a way to uh, to do this with the same types of probabilities, but uh, lower cost and lower risk? Yes. And we'll get to that in a moment. And but the whole purpose of these delta neutral trades where you bring premium in is that you are taking advantage of that high probability, that high volatility and the statistical probability that the stock's going to stay in a certain range. Now, last week, we discussed, again, the 800 call, see it right here, and the 500 put. And by selling both of these, we were taking premium out of the call and premium out of the put. And together, at the time I was doing this, these were actually trading for a, about mm, $8.25. But by the time I got to market and looked at the real-time prices, they were trading for over 10. So in last week's video, I suggested uh, this as an example, selling the 1218, that's the December 18th, 800 calls, and December 18th, 500 puts. Selling those as a strangle and being able, being able to bring in $10 or more for this. So what that means is that for every strangle, that's a call and a put sold, you're bringing in 10 times 100, which is $1,000. You're bringing in $1,000 for this strangle. Now again, at this point, we've sold this to someone else. Our objective is for it to drop in value so that we can either buy it back cheaper or simply let it expire and keep the entire credit. Now, one of the buyback ways I suggested was take, taking 80% of what you brought in. And that basically means you take that $10 per spread contract, that premium you brought in, you calculate 20% of that number, and you buy to close the strangle at two. So if you sold it at 10 and you bought it back at two, you would have an $800 profit. And so remember, uh, placing that exit order would look like this. All right, after you're filled on the sale, you have to buy it back to close. So you'd simply buy back the 800 call and buy back the 500 put on one ticket called a strangle. If we bought it for 10 and we could, excuse me, if we sold it for 10 and we could buy it back for two, we would create an eight point or $800 profit in the trade. Now, what ended up happening? Well, if you uh, need a refresher, Tesla closed around 600 and $70 per share on Friday. So it was not above 800. It was not below 500. It was right in the middle. These options expired at, they expire worthless. So to the buyer, the buyer lost money. But to the seller, that was us. We made money. Uh, either you, either I could have uh, bought these back at two 
and then took an $800 profit. But I could also have let them expire worthless and taken the full 10 points. All right, so this week, let's do it again, but with less risk. So how do we create a high probability delta neutral trade without all the margin and risk? Well, an iron condor will accomplish everything above it creates a lower cost trade and a lower risk trade, but it also comes with lower reward. All right, I want to show you that right now as we show you how what an iron condor is and how to trade it. So an iron condor is the sale of both an out-of-the-money call spread and an out-of-the-money put spread. These are credit spreads All right, using the same expiration date. It's considered a delta neutral trade because we're not looking for the stock to really go anywhere. And you can do it at a credit but it also comes with risk, it also comes with margin, but much less than an outright strangle. So let's move over to my tools and let me show you exactly how this is done. Okay, so I'm looking at options on tomsoptiontools.com. Now I'm do what I have is an option chain here and I'm gonna look at the options on Tesla that expire in three days on December 24th to create that short-term iron condor. All right, I'm also looking at, at strike prices above and below Tesla by a factor of 20%. So I want to go above, above the stock price by 20% and below the stock price by 20% and see what's available. So I have all these other options, strikes and expirations I can look at, but I'm primarily interested in what's going on with Tesla right now because the volatility is in, in what's happening today. So scroll down. The first thing I'm looking for is where the stock price is. Currently, as of this video, $662.65. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to get an idea of where the stock is likely to stay between now and expiration Thursday. So I'm going to take this $2,755 for the $660 call and the $2,485 for the $660 put. If I add those premiums together, I come up with somewhere around $52, $53. So I want to place my iron condor, my put spread and my call spread, um, I want to be at least $52 below and $52 above this strike price to take advantage of being outside of the expected range, right? But again, we make money if this particular strategy, if the stock in this particular strategy stays in between what we're selling. So let's go create the bull put side of the iron condor. Now scroll down and what I'm looking at here is I am looking at the area below at 600 or below. So if I take a look and see the 600 puts right now, they're trading at 645. So I want to sell those. I want to sell this part of the equation. And then I want to go down and I want to buy something for protection. So if I go 20 points down, I see the 580 puts. Well, they're trading for 418. If I bought this particular part of the trade for 418 and I sold the 600 puts for 645, um, I'm taking in more on the sell side than I'm paying on the buy side. So therefore, what I'm doing is I'm creating a credit spread, a put credit spread. Again, buy the lower strike put, sell the higher strike put. That is half of the iron condor equation. Now, if we go over to the calls. So in this case, we're going to go at least 52 points above today's strike price. And I'm looking at the 730 calls and the 750 calls. Selling the 730 calls... I'm going to take in $5.90. Buying the 750 calls, I'm going to pay out $3.85. So I'm going to also put this trade on for a credit of a couple of points. Right? Now, doing these individually creates a directional trade. So, if, for instance, if I just did the put side, I would have a bullish put spread. If I did the bear side where I just sold the, the lower and bought the higher, that is a, that is a bearish call spread. But putting them together creates the iron condor. Now I've got the iron condor where if I construct everything together, it looks like this. What am I doing? I'm buying the December 24th 750 calls. I'm selling the December 24th 730 calls. I'm selling the December 24th 600 put. I'm buying the December 24th 580 put. Again, we're selling the middle. This is the body of the condor and we're buying the wings for protection. And so what we're doing is we're creating a trade that is a credit and that credit, and I do these as limit orders, all right? I don't put these in at the market. I always do them as limit orders because I wanna get my price or better. 
Right now, this thing's trading around $432 as a credit. And it looks like this on the risk graph. So take a look at our risk graph, you'll see what I mean, All right? The risk graph shows on the left-hand side, this is the stock, and you can see Tesla and how it's been running up uh, over the past 30 days or so. But uh, my expectations on this trade is over the next three days, we're gonna be in between these areas of around 720, uh, 720 on the high side, uh, 730 on the high side, and then way down here, uh, below 600 on the low side, right? So as long as we stay in this range, this trade is going to make money because remember, we sold this spread. What's the total risk on the trade? Well, if we were to get $432 as a credit, then what we'd be looking at is a risk of $1,568. Now, why in the world would someone risk over three times what they're bringing in? Well, I'll tell you why. It's a word that begins with a P, probability. The statistical probability on this trade right now shows somewhere of between 94 and 97% when we look at as we go from three days left to expiration, two, one, and zero days to expiration, right? Statistically, this stock uh, in this particular trade has a 94.2% chance uh, that is with one day left, with two days left, 97% chance that it is going to be at break even or better. And if you go all the way to expiration, you're looking at 96.8% chance we're at break even or better by expiration, which is only in three days. So that's why people look at this and say, I'm willing to risk more than I'm going to bring in because the probabilities, the statistical probabilities are on my side.